my coolie. My good boy. Hello, everybody. I want to talk a little bit about tech today. Um, a lot of times when people come to me as new clients um, and they haven't been uh, in dressage primarily um, with their horses, you know, maybe you come from a different uh, discipline like three-day eventing or jumping or some other pleasure riding, um, a lot of times the questions that I get at first is, um, is it really important? Do you really have to have a dressage saddle? and a dressage bridle and I always say you know you should set yourself and your horse up for success um, in this endeavor and in this incredible journey that actually encompasses the word dressage <laughs> um, so yes it's important to have the right equipment it is important to invest and to look for the right type of tools that you you need to have in order to connect in meaningful and pain-free ways with your with your beloved horse of course right and so i just want to go over a few things um talk a little bit about bridles talk about i'll talk about pads and saddles and um the kind of bit i like to use for most horses and um just in general you know i know it's it's a daunting uh, experience to look at saddles there ex ex some of them are extremely um, expensive and it's hard to find saddle fitters a lot of times in in the area that people live in but believe me I've done this all my life um, it's worth the search it's worth the expense and you know there are many different ways of going about you know getting your first nice saddle you can get a used um, piece of equipment you can get you know look online there are many different ways of you know finding b bits and bridles and everything used um, but it is important that, you know, when you're setting out to, you know, ride your horse in this very specific way that dressage is all about, that, you know, you, f you don't struggle in the saddle to find your balance and that you can align your center of gravity with that of the horses, for example, right? And that just, it's just, if you want to do this, do it right, is all I'm saying, right? And the same thing with bridles. Bridles need to be fitted and be correctly, you know, um, matched around your horse's face and head. And bridles, bridles, accessories like, like um, the reins, you know, you really, there are just a little, few little things that I'm going to talk about that will help you make some good choices and then you're set once and for all and you're going to go on um, your adventure with your horse and enough said about all that I'm going to get to the details now <laughs> all right so here I have a very nice um, dressage saddle which is made by Schlese the Schlese company out of Canada um, and I am a big fan of their saddles of course you know there are many different opinions and many different options but this is a good starting point for me for our um, little demo here today and so First thing, before I start talking more about the fitting and all of that and what, what we should consider about the saddle is to think about how we put it on. I see a lot of people, um, just because of the sheer size of the horse, slamming the saddle on, which is never a really good option. So I want you to just, you know, before you put the saddle on, think, take a deep breath and think you want to lift it on up over your shoulders and then let it glide from the withers over backwards to where it needs to sit so i'm going to show you i'm going to have one hand right here the other hand is right by the pommel i can lift it up over let it sit on the withers for a little bit and then put it back into sort of the position where it needs to be and i'm showing this to you without the saddle pad for now just so that i can give you a little bit of an idea of saddle fit so Number one, a lot of times people put the saddle too close, too far forward, too close to the um, scapula, the shoulder blades of the horse. So once you have sort of found sort of that natural sweet spot here, I want to make sure that there's about two fingers between where the scapula, the, so the shoulder blade ends and where the beginning of your saddle starts so this is one measurement that i want you to be aware of okay so then the other one is up here you want to make sure that you have enough space for the horse's withers to move and the back and the vertebrae to come up and down as they're moving and um, especially as you're putting pressure on with your own weight later on so what i want you to consider first is that right here between the inner part the inner side of the pommel 
you want to have about three fingers space here between the side of the withers and where, this, where the pommel starts on the inside. And then up here, where the biggest distance between the withers is it's between three and four, we have a really light, a nice four finger space here. So that should give him ample space and be comfortable once we get moving. Yes, I know. <laughs> and um, so that's kind of the starting point of that. Back here, you want to make sure that there are about four to five fingers in the panel, the, the gullet where the two um, saddle um, pads back there are coming together. You want to be able to make a fist and you know fit it in between you know, the cushions that are left and right underneath the saddle candle. Um, then in terms of how long and how big a saddle should be, there's a rule of thumb, more or less, you know, it's a little bit different for different horses, but when you stand in, on, next to your horse, you want to be able to look, <laughs> look at where the hair lines come together. You will see that the hairs are, are growing, the coat is growing this way, and then there's a different um, wave motion of the hair that comes this way and where they both converge is, is sort of a, there's a line there and you want to make sure that the the pads back here the saddle pads are not going past that line in order to be you know safe and comfortable back here starting to be not so comfortable for the horse. okay so then one more thing you want to run if you have a saddle you should always have a professional of course helping you a fitter to fit the saddle you know, to your horse, but if you're just trying something out or have somebody else show you something, you want to be able to run your fingers underneath the shoulders here and feel that there's nothing sort of feeling a little bit closer or a little bit farther away from the horse's shoulder blade. So that should be feel, feeling pretty even. And then once you lift the saddle um, pouch or the, um, yeah, the, the, I'm not even sure what this is called, up a little bit. <laughs> The subtle blood in German, I could tell you in German, <laughs> there is another layer. And then if you put your finger underneath that and you drive or you kind of glide underneath horizontally, if I were on top, I would glide this way, but I want to do it underneath the saddle and you will feel the panels underneath there should be sitting fairly evenly on the horse's back and they're not bridging. Bridging would mean that there's more pressure here and here and that there's a little bit of a gap in between in the middle. So, so much for this part. Um, going to take the saddle back off and put the saddle pad on so that you can see how all of that works together. Okay. So here's the saddle pad and the same thing. You know, you never want to slap this onto a horse. Always gently lift up and glide it over the back so that it fits nicely over the, the withers. This is a really nicely made one by Lemieux. Um, I will put some links in my um, video description and so that you can see you know, what kind of equipment um, brands I like. But this one fits really nicely because it gives space for the withers and then you know, sort of sits nicely across the back. And then we're gonna go and take the saddle back up and again, lift. <laughs> set it down and then let it gently slide into place. You're going to want to grab the um, saddle pad and pull it up like this so that it's not pushing down on the withers or on the spine. And then here are the straps for the saddle girth. Pull them through this little, the little nook here. I'm going to grab this, this girth which is also made by Schlese. I like it for, for the bigger horses because the padding in the middle gives a little bit more surface and holds the saddle all together a little bit nicer in place. And the little cutout in the front here gives ample room for the front legs to swing forward and backward. So I like to go around and I'm gonna fasten this on the other side take those little straps through the loops just like I would on the other side make them put them into the buckle which you can't see right now so you have to bear with me if I only have one person and one camera <laughs> so and then you can see I'm coming around here 
The next thing you will want to pay attention to is that most horses are not super thrilled at first when you put the girth on, and you will see it in Kuli too. So as I'm looking to reach for the girth, I want to be sure that I look forward. I want to bend this way and reach for the girth and pull it up this way. The reason I'm doing that is if he should have a reaction or be scared or something and should suddenly spook or um, kick or you know swing around, he will hit me in the butt. <laughs> Rather than if I stand this way, I might get something into my face, which I, of course, would like to avoid. <laughs> so then I'm going to feed the little straps through the buckle here, and I will put them into the lowest yet snug fitting position. In this case, it's the, you know, lower hole three on the little straps here. And I want to make sure that, you know, when the horse stands here like that, that it's not too close to the front. I always say when the horse's leg come, come forward a little bit, there you go, is forward like this a little bit, as you can see, I hope, <laughs> that you should have one hand um, with space here between between the shoulder where here the shoulder ends and where you know the girth starts so that's a really nice way to check for the alignment i'm going to tighten a little bit more on the other side everything really gradual because that's how it's really comfortable for the horse and you always have to consider that right here in this area, all the way here, are a lot of nerve endings, and the horses are always more sensitive towards all of this. So, you know, we don't want to slap the saddle on and then pull up the girth, and before you know it, you'll have a perfectly tight and tense horse <laughs> before you even get on. So, you know, little by little, some horses will let you do a little bit more, some, you know, don't, and then in, in the ideal case, you will walk them around a little bit and let them, you know, get rid of the tension and then let a little bit of air out of their stomach area. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And so without much further ado, I'm going to go right to the next part. <laughs> so I also want to talk a little bit about bridles. And this bridle here that I have here is um, made by Schockermühle. And um, it's a really nice dressage bridle. It's not too expensive, but it's also really very, ma very well made. It has a lot of good padding on the inside of all these different straps, especially the one that goes on top of the crown here and right behind the ears. There's a little cutback, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's a really nice little cushion that goes all the way around up there where the horses are very sensitive. Um, there's also the cavison that also has a really nice padding. It's not too thick, not too intrusive, but really comfy and cushy. Um, I also um, always like a cabazon with a nose band. I know that there are people who don't like it and maybe some horses don't do so well with it, but I in general like this um, just because it keeps the horse's um, f mouth secured while the bit sits in it. And if you know you should ever have a moment where your hands aren't quite secured, you know the the bit itself in the horse's mouth will not just kind of fly around and clang against the teeth. Um, there's a, just a little bit of a stabilizing factor in this. And then also the cavison has this really nice um, cushioned um, chin rest that goes all the way around, loops through this little buckle here, and the horse actually gets to rest his or her um, jaw, lower jaw, on this on this cushion, so that when you apply a little bit of pressure and the horse eventually will step into the contact, um, there's a little bit of a chance for the horse to rest their chin or their lower um, jaw on this cushion, and it's again, it's very nicely made and cushioned, um, padded, <laughs> and so that's actually, you know, sort of the basics of the of the bridle. The reins um, have little stops on them. Sometimes you have to buy these extra separate from the bridle. I like them because it really gives you a good indication, you know, where your hands are in which situation and, you know, where you want to keep them on certain days and other days you might want to say, okay, so I'm going to try this out with a little bit shorter um, rein. Um, and, you know, you'll always remember it's between maybe the third and the fourth stopper. Um, you will hear me say that sometimes in my training videos or in my lessons too. Um, so that is that. And then 
the last but not least very important piece is the, the bit itself. I like um, this one because it's a um, very comfortable, well-made um, egg butt, single jointed um, bit, dressage bit that um, is ergonomically really well made. It tapers a little bit to get to become a little bit thinner towards the middle. There are the um, jointed parts where it connects in the middle are really w very nicely rounded and well made, comfortable for the horse. And then the egg butt parts here on the side helps you with your steering, you know, and you can always, you know, make sure that your horse, you're not pulling out the bit out of one side of the corner of your horse's mouth and um, it will steady the, ho the bit in the horse's mouth as well. So that's so much for, for this bridle. I'll put a link in my description so you can find it online. Um, Cooley has, I'm going to put this away and switch this out. Cooley has a little bit of a different but also very well made bridle. Um, it's made by uh, Stüben another German company and as you can see this one too has really wonderfully made comfortable cushions that go right behind the ears. They're separated and there's a little bridging strap across the crown of the horse's head which which also you know makes sense. Always you know, always want to think about how can I make this comfortable because a lot of pressure translates into that part especially up here where the where these these muscle extensions here sometimes become really hard and tight, but you know, anything we can do to make it more comfortable and a better feel for the horse. This one has an integrated um, brow band. It has an interesting des design that is a little bit different than other bridles where these side parts are a little bit rounded and ergonomically fitting really nicely around the horse's um, head. And then again, the, the cavison is padded beautiful, nice, cushy nose area. And then here's the chin rest, another beautiful padded piece, nose band, as I mentioned, you know. And so this is also a really nice alternative. Um, I'm not quite sure where this was bought. Um, I can see if I can find the link. I'll put it if I find it in the description as well. And so then I'm going to show you how to put this bridle on. So when you take your horse's um, cross ties off, always make sure that you put your hand a little bit underneath here so that when you undo the buckle, it doesn't snap against their face. And then we'll do that on the other side too. Those little, all these little details are really important and the horses will appreciate it. You know, they don't have to be um, unnecessarily distracted before we get started and even never get into the saddle. <laughs> and then I like to put the bridle, um, the, the reins over the neck of the horse. I hold my bridle here. I unbuckle the halter and then I'm going to switch. I put the halter over my right elbow, arm, lower arm, <laughs> just so that I don't have to fuss with it and so that I can keep my hand on the horse's head. And Cooley's getting ready. He's already opening his mouth here. So I'm going to take all of these parts that are running vertically underneath the brow band or the, yeah, the brow band. And I'll put them right in front of his eyes, sort of, on his nose and then cup the bit into his mouth, pull up, put this part over the top of his ears. And then, you know, we have a fairly secure <laughs> bridle on this horse and you can then start to pay attention to the rest of these little straps. I always like to do this part, the cabison first. The cabison always goes on not too tight, not too um, loose so that it sits nicely and securely somewhere here in the middle of the horse's nose bridge, not too low because down here um, the bone becomes really sensitive and um, thin and you don't want to you know, inhibit the, the breathing either. Then you're going to take the nose band, put that up in the buckle as, as tight as you need to. I always say rather go on the loose side. And I like to keep my four fingers underneath the buckle while I put that on so that I don't get those little whiskers caught while I um, buckle all of these little things on his face. <laughs> so then we have that. And you can see this is not very tight. He's perfectly able to still open his mouth. I always say as a rule of thumb, you know, you put two fingers between his jawbone and the strap. And then that's a good starting point. 
And then we, all we have left now is the part that goes around his throat latch here. And we'll buckle that. And I say there, I like to keep three upright fingers between where his actual throat skin starts and where the, the little strap begins. And so everything sits, you know, nicely, cleanly on his head. I like to go in front at least once and always make sure that everything is straight horizontally and that we don't have anything crooked or any of the little keepers are out of whack. And then that's that. <laughs> so much for tacking up and for tech recommendations I have. And then we are ready to go on our little ride today. Thank you for watching and happy riding. <laughs> 